everybody. Welcome back to the show. Um, I'm going to wait till a few more people log in. Um, we have a good show this evening, talking about some more COVID-19 uh, isolation solutions. So I'll just give everybody a few minutes to log in before we get started. All right, so tonight we're going to discuss giving birth during COVID-19 isolation. Um, I guess people really didn't think of this as an issue, um, but it's becoming a very prevalent issue. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, because, you know, as more people are going to the hospital, that's putting even people that are not sick at risk of uh, becoming sick. Tonight, um, and, and expectant mothers are, you know, a kind of like they're kind of like a group that falls into those you know the group that's most likely to contract the virus and they could be at risk of actually be coming to it or you know suffering some you know types of complications um so i thought you know we need to have somebody come on here and explain to some individuals about especially if they're about to give birth during this isolation or even you know just immediately after this isolation is over with if it's over with in june there's still going to be that issue at the hospital of, you know, there's cases there. Um, the virus is probably rampant throughout the hospital at this point. Um, and do you really want to even want to go in there and give birth uh, knowing that these things are happening? So I invited a special guest. Her name is Mama Mama Lucy. Uh, she's the founder and director of the mothership. And I'm going to bring her on here now. So how are you doing this evening? I'm so good. I'm good, healthy, no fever, no cough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's excellent. You know, that's really, that's really odd now to even hear that. So, so many people are getting sick now. Yeah. <laughs> the fever so, is really rampant. Yes. So tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do, what's the mother Tell us all about what that is. I am Mama Mawusi Ashakir of the Mothership. And what we do is we are here to address the alarming numbers of infant and maternal mortality for which we are suffering as black women in America. So we were already in a state of crisis and we're still in a state of crisis. And we've actually been, this, that, this has actually uh, uh, um, literally like exacerbated our crisis, this, this right. COVID-19 issue. Um, we came into being in 2001 and we were serving our community and uh, making sure we got health information, education, and even inspiring mothers with new ways to birth, new things to do with their health and their children, ways to feed our children in a healthier way in order to produce health maintenance, uh, for health maintenance strategies. Um, we have been working in the community now, multiplying ourselves and becoming doulas, childbirth educators, postpartum doulas, recovery specialists and fertility strategists. Uh, so the mothership now, now is an army of mothers who are helping <laughs> mothers to be yeah. safe during the time of birth. Yeah. So that's so, what we... You know... Um, <clears throat> hold on. Thing here. Yeah. So, you know, I keep pulling up these articles and, you know, you know I'm, really, I'm really focused on tracking this whole... COVID-19 thing and I you know this, this came this came to me last week uh, when our, a, a similar article like this one was posted and it was saying there's uncertainty for expectant mothers um, and so they're talking about things like as you know when a, when a mother goes to give birth at the hospital a lot of times um, they're tell they're they're even turning some people away at this point um, and they're telling them like you know our, our, our level of cases for COVID-19 is so high we don't even have a bed for you 
or if they do have a bed, they're telling the mothers that, you know, only you can come in. Your even your spouse or your partner cannot even come in with you. And so, you know, being hit with something like that, or you know, even you know, women that are in prenatal visits, they're telling them that they can't even come in for their prenatal visits, even if it's at a doctor's office, because they're they're getting cases everywhere. And so, how would a even an expectant mother or a mother that's about to give birth, what are what are some suggestions that you have for her during this time? Uh, that you would, you know, would help her transition into either giving birth or, you know, just, just calming her fears and things. Oh, my gosh. Look what we are. We are in a place now where black mothers must get a doula. We need a doula because we need help to understand what the heck is going on. Um, as we take a look at this changing world and what's what's happening with COVID nineteen, we're under we're they're actually making mothers now high risk. No matter what, mom is high risk because she is considered one of those immunocompromised people, and she literally is. She literally is that person like the elderly or the infant that is in position that she can be a carrier and she can also be a, a risk at risk. So I've had one mother contact me to let me know that her due date what her due date she was scheduled for a prenatal appointment just before her due date. They are now going to take that prenatal appointment two days before her due date and induce her. And she found out because she went to see, she went online to her doctor's offices online to see the time of her appointment. And she saw that on the time of her appointment, that what was scheduled to happen was an induction. They were going to induce her on that. They didn't tell her this when she went to her last appointment. Wow. Now she's like, oh my God, they are going to, they're trying to induce me two days early. I won't even be 40 weeks. You know what I'm saying? he's overdue or anything right and, and the reason that they're doing it is because they're the pandemic status is making that be where now that's it mom is high risk we can induce her induction means that they, it literally puts her at higher risk for c-section now and lower and it lowers her chances for vaginal birth wow yeah this is we're in a place where this is such a difficult time to navigate that she that mom's first thing is get a doula if you have no money if you have money whatever you know don't just ask <laughs> put it out there can someone help me you know what i'm saying is there are there doulas that are available for my due date you know what i'm saying can you support me uh that's what i would suggest number one because that doula can then help you to navigate this medical system uh, her doula the woman whom i was speaking of her doula can go into the medical appointment with her and help her to be able to express to her doctor that that's not what she wants to do that she would prefer to labor at home and and uh go into labor naturally and not be induced she can help her to express that and she can also give her the courage one give her the words to say too because sometimes we get so choked up with in front of those doctors as well as go with her to show that this woman is not alone okay. now unfortunately too why i say go with her to show that this woman is not alone but unfortunately, we're in a position where the doctors are not even allowing the anyone else to come into the office with them up. Right. Sometimes, right. you know, so so when she comes in on that next appointment date, she may have to walk back there by herself. So okay. she's going to need her birth team to express to her what to say, how to say it how to express the fact that she does not want to be induced or, or any uh, medical interventions whatsoever. She's going to have to express that to her doctor. Okay. So can you explain like the difference between doulas and midwives and things like that? Uh, Cause I, yeah. some people don't really understand what the difference is. Some people don't even know what a doula is. So if you could explain what those are. <laughs> yes. a, birth, a doula is a birth companion. 
uh, and a birth companion is someone who goes with you and they are well versed in um, medical procedures. They're well versed in an anatomy, physiology and how labor and delivery processes will happen in the female body. They're also uh, well versed in comfort measures to help mom bring about comfort during the times of um, uh, during times of labor and pain management. Um, and she does not do any medical procedures, but she's there for comfort and support and information. So if they tell mom, we want to do this procedure on you, then she weighs and measures the the mom's individual, you know, her, her level. She's gotten to know mom over the gestation of her pregnancy enough to know that mom wanted this or she doesn't want this. She knows mom's birth plan. And so she can communicate that birth plan to the medical staff. Uh, she can also make sure that mom gets her specialized attention and care. A, a midwife is much different. A midwife is a care provider. And what she does is she can literally pinpoint things that are uh, pregnancy disorders or, or pregnancy issues or pregnancy complications that may come up. She can also help mom to navigate around those complication issues. She can help mom to um, uh to literally um, during the time of labor and birth, she will be there during the time of labor and birth uh, to catch the baby and, and facilitate labor and delivery with mom and postpartum. So she does prepartum and postpartum care. Uh, action, uh, met a doctor. Okay. Um, there are, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. There are, um, Different, many different types of midwives. You have, like in Cincinnati, we have the Tri Health Midwives, and those are midwives whom have, whom are licensed midwives, uh, whom have uh, maybe gone through college and finished their um, masters of nursing, and then went on to midwifery school. Um, we also have um, certified professional midwives, and these are midwives who have. Um, not been went to not went to school, but yet have apprenticed with other with apprenticed with other midwives, and have participated in birth at births as a, um, a a helper, and then also have facilitated births themselves. Uh, then they are tested on uh, many different things, sterilization methods and um, birth methods and things like this, even birth complication met uh, birth complication issues and how to navigate them. And then you have the grand midwives. And these are the grand grand the people who were apprentice trained by the grand midwives, the granny quote unquote granny midwives, those women who were there to uh, help us to birth uh, back since the beginning of time and they <laughs> used holistic and natural methods in order to support mothers in labor and birth as well as in keeping them healthy health maintenance methods um, before pregnancy during pregnancy and after pregnancy okay so if a mother like you know she's gone to the prenatal appointment and she does not have a doula how could she go about getting one now like say she's like far into the pregnancy because she still get a doula absolutely if she's even 36 weeks 38 weeks pregnant 40 weeks pregnant and or and in, in the case of this the previous sister who i talked to she was she's actually 39 weeks pregnant yes she can still hire a doula especially in these changing times and um sit down with that doula uh, in the in the ways that that doula is able to, but there's in the beginning probably be a video uh, orientation and then sit down together, go to the last prenatal appointment with her. Yes, yeah, she can secure a doula, get a doula now, and, and have her to support her through that birth. Um, okay. How she would go about that is, of course, we're on social media and we're on so so we have so so many different social media outlets. If she simply put the call out there on her timeline, she's going to get a lot of responses because now is the time. Ironically, we have become so attuned to doulas and birth attendants and breastfeeding and we're, we've become so um, concerned and involved with our uterine care. 
now that there'll be a lot of people who will either direct you to someone or they will or there was someone will respond okay that's great that's great excellent um so what do you suggest if there's a mother that you know actually gets the virus um and they tell her to isolate at home um what do you suggest that she does to like you know maybe maintain a fever or any type of any type of complications that could occur from any type of viral infection like what would you suggest that mother do well let's talk about it first if she's tested as COVID-19 they're probably going to take her in because she's considered how her risk is so high the stakes are so high for her life and her child's life according mm-hmm. to their um, according to how they look at things that they may keep her um, and they may quarantine her in the hospital maybe okay. if she um, is suffering from the classic symptoms of fever, coughing, uh, tiredness, um, and they test her and she has it, uh, or, or maybe she sees that at home that she has these symptoms. What she should do is make sure she stays well hydrated. And that means get your electrolyte water, get your coconut water in, drink, 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 drink. Um, also, eat lots of fruits. You need lots of fruits on board because that vitamin C is what is going to help to kill that virus inside of your body in whatever virus, even if it's the, fl- the flu, even if it's the flu. Um, and you're going to need to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Do not eat any starches because they contribute to a fever. They create, they are, they contribute to the height and the uh, the uh, uh, degrees that that fever gets to. So no chicken noodle soup, no chicken and no noodles, <laughs> no potato, <laughs> no bread and no rice. Um, I don't know why we have this thing of feeding a fever when we actually should fast a fever. Uh, so fruits and vegetables for mommy. That way she can still be consuming and still um, feel her, you know, be able to get her stomach a little full with some good um, steamed bre- vegetables and things like that. And even a big, huge salad, but no milk based dressings and no starches. If she takes this route, she'll be able to to navigate through through this. Um, Also make sure she gets lots of garlic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic. We want to keep that on board. Even if she can do that raw, that'll be good for her. Um, Lots of water. Uh, If she can take up this diet, even if she has, is a person who may have acid reflux, afraid of that from garlic, don't worry because it'll, uh, once she takes on a diet that is less starches, she'll be able to digest even a lot better. So, um, the definitely get in her garlic and her onions and things like that in her in her meals because those are antibiotics. Those are literally virus fighters. Okay, that's good information. Um, does anybody have any questions yeah. out there that are watching? Uh, we have some comments. Uh, okay. Kyra Bar said, "Kyra Bar said this is great information. Thank you, Kyra." Um, Alexis S. said, yes, do. <laughs> um, so any questions out there? Yeah, I was reading a, uh, an article. Um, so back in February, when I really started like tracking and looking into all this stuff, um, it was a child that was born. Um, it was 19 days old. And it had actually gotten the COVID-19 over in China, Wuhan, China. Okay. And the child actually recovered um, without any type of medical intervention. Um, and they were like, what happened? What happened? And I said, back then, I said, you know, the mother, she probably had the virus before the child was born. Yeah. And developed I, antibodies. And she developed antibodies. And what happened, those antibodies crossed the placenta. It's called vertical. Um, it's called transplacental, where you can transmit antibodies through the placenta and things like that. And so when a child was born, whether it was introduced, the virus introduced to the child through birth or just being in the hospital and they picked it up through the air, uh, those antibodies kicked in and were able to fight it off before it could actually cause infection. Yes. And so 
I had said that back in February because they kept saying we don't know if we don't know what happened, whatever. Well, it was an article published yesterday uh, that said that they had tested like six different mothers that had had the virus, and then they checked tested their children, the babies that were born after them having the virus, and they all were exhibiting those antibodies um, after birth. So, I mean, you know, our bodies are powerful things. They can they can heal themselves. You know, they're they're talking about using malaria medicine and all this stuff. And I'm like, we got an immune system here. I mean, <laughs> this is what we, this is what we were made for. You know, and it's powerful and yeah. it's very powerful. Yeah. You know? we're under we're undermining it and we're underestimating its yeah. ability. We're very much underestimating its ability because that's not one of the things that they say they're going to support people to do. They're not saying we want you to buy more fruits and vegetables. They're not saying those things. They're not saying include these different fruits and vegetables in your diet in order to eliminate. You know, they're not telling you about um, cranberry juice. They're not telling you about um, hibiscus flowers, a very powerful vitamin right. antioxidants. They're telling you about elderberry. Good thing. Elderberry is good. That's out here, rather. That's out here, rather. But right. you also got elderberries. You, I mean, you also have uh, hibiscus flowers. You also have um, all of the berries that are out now. I mean, I went to the grocery store. So many organic berries, raspberries, yes. blueberries, strawberries, yes. all of those berries matter and count. The oranges, grapefruits, and things right. like that. The li li lemons and limes, these things are powerhouses and right. are also antibiotic and anti um, antiviral. Yeah, antiviral. Yeah, because yeah. I did a, a few weeks ago, I did a, a whole presentation about immunity and um, I had talked about elderberries, but I talked about other other dark purple fruits and vegetables and what yeah. they contain in them are anthocyanins, which are actual they they have they actually have scientific studies that show that these anthocyanins that's the ones that that's the um, chemicals that give the the plant that purple color they are actually antiviral what they would do they would test it on cells in a petri dish and they would put those anthocyanins in there and they would put virus in there and what they found is that the anthocyanins would prevent the virus from invading the cell so it can't replicate itself and if the if the virus was able to get in those anthocyanins would keep the virus inside that cell so that it could not lyse the cell and re release itself into the organism. Wow. And so, yeah, so, you know, they're always pushing elderberries, but, you know, blueberries are just as high in anthocyanins, mm -hmm. um, purple cabbage, all types of stuff that you could be consuming that have all those things in there. Yeah. And so I, I kept yeah. trying to educate people about that. Like, you know, if you can't get elderberries, because elderberries can be dangerous too if you eat them raw. You're supposed to cook them, and nobody's telling people that. <laughs> right, and people are throwing back like raisins. Yes, yes. And then, and uh, it's I always say, color food for colored folks. Yeah, we eat, we're eating and consuming too many browns and blacks and beiges, but we have to get into colorful foods, and that's where yes. you got in the dark purples. It's very powerful to eat those foods of deep, of deep color, of deep pigmentation, and we're of deep pigmentation, so it makes sense, right? We're people of the sun. We should eat foods that that also have been transformed by the sun. So even the brown, even the brown and black rices. You know, yes. should we consume if you're going to do that. You know, yes. the colored yes. potatoes rather than the white potatoes, the red and the yellow yes. potatoes. You know, what I'm saying if you're gonna, if you have to eat and and yes. even sweet potatoes. You know, so we really need to come back to whole foods, and I hope that this is our nudge in the right direction. Whole foods yes. are also the the immune system builders. Yes, they are. They are. Um, and that's that's what people don't. I don't think people understand how immunity is built. Like you know. You can consume those things, they help you fight off an infection, but it, it takes your body being exposed to an infection to actually build that those antibodies True. so that your body can, you know, if it comes back in, it can fight it off. But you need those vitamins and minerals and things to help build those, like the white blood cells and all that stuff that's helping you fight. Right. And so yeah. people don't understand that. They just think, oh, if I just if I eat this elderberry now. I'm, I'm, I'm clear. No, you should have been eating elderberries a long time ago to help build up that resistance. <laughs> yes, that, that response. Yeah. 
yeah. there is a response. Because well, what elderberries are to do is they coat the cell to yep. keep the cell like it, like you just broke down. And so with that, they they're hoping that they can catch it and yeah. coat sell quick enough but you have to have been eating that you need to that's the one thing about now we know uh, I, I more so i'm gonna go back to what you said before we started which is i don't know why black people forget that they've been using biological warfare against us yeah. so now that we've been jarred back awake yeah. now let's begin to to do what Mark, marcus garvey said which is inoculate ourselves against yeah their attacks ahead of time by eating the healthy foods. People go, ah, you want to be vegan, but let me tell you what, we need to be whole foods. Yes, we do. Right, exactly. <laughs> we do need to have, be, have whole foods on deck. We need to be acquainted with those herbs of our ancestors. We need to get back in tune and time and touch. Exactly, exactly. Um. So anybody have any questions about doulas or about um? Anything about birthing? Is anybody about to experience that? And you have any questions? Or you might want to ask your doctor or anything like that. Um, I know there's, I guess there's still a shortage on tests. Um, and that's an issue. A lot of times the hospitals are telling you, unless you're a high risk case, to not even come. come. They want you to stay home and then you just call them if you start experiencing that that you know that labor breathing then that's when you're supposed to actually show up if you experience that now everybody's not experiencing that um also we they're not reporting the numbers of people that actually recover so the recovery numbers are actually way higher than the actual death numbers right um, and they're not reporting that because you know that probably goes against whatever the narrative they're trying to you know push here um but just know there's been hundreds of thousands of people that have recovered around the world, not just here in the United States, but, you know, everywhere it is, it's a, you know, taken hold, people have recovered. Like right. I said, that, that little child, that 19 month day, my 19 day old child recovered without any type of medical intervention. Um, and it was strictly antibodies from the mother that provided that, that recovery for that child. So our immune systems, there are amazing things um and you know when you're going to the if you're going to the doctor and they're trying to push things on you you have a right to say you don't want something no. yes you, you do. have a right you can yeah. say i don't i don't want that medication or i don't i don't want that treatment you don't yeah. have to be afraid of the doctor um yes. because at the end if they don't ever talk about all the people that have died or been maimed because of medical error uh no. those numbers rank up in the hundreds of thousands yeah <laughs> every year this is just every year this is not like a collective over this is every year about two hundred fifty thousand people either are seriously injured or they're killed by medical error yeah um so you need to know number one that they don't really know any enough about this virus so they're every day they're just practicing and they're hoping whatever they use is going to be effective so everything is just up in the air. So you don't want your child, <laughs> your child you bring into the earth to be a victim of them practicing. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess we haven't really talked about home birth, if that's an option, even if you're, you know, really late to your pregnancy. What what do you suggest about that? <laughs> let's let's talk about the different options. Um one of the things that um, I've discussed with um, some of my doulas and they've talked to me about is that what they're doing is having mom to labor at home for a long time. She'll do all of she'll do a lot of her laboring at home and then they'll transport at the last minute because they're not they're no longer we were we've been in checked out several different cases some cases some hospitals like uh i think mercy north was letting letting doulas in but then several other hospitals are not letting doulas come in they may let the father come in uh, or the mother of the mother but they may not let a doula come in okay. so we have to be aware of that um i like i said in the beginning get a doula 
ASAP and then labor with your doula. She is aware of the cues of birth, knowing that knowing your cues, knowing your pain tolerance, checking out, you know, she's uh, she understands what to look for. And so she also knows what to look for when you're beginning to dilate. And now it's really time for you to go to the hospital. So you really want to have that um, doula there with you, your mom and your mate there and partner or mate there with you uh, at home where you can gain the strength from them and get energy from them and help from them uh, drink and come and eat as you need to or want to and be more comfortable uh, there at home until you've reached a point where it's really time to go. Uh, that's, that's one option. Um, home birth comes on the table uh, if you have reached a point of low risk. Uh, which if you have uh, been determined low risk and that's a really big really big spec deal and it's a it's a lot of responsibility uh, that is with that um, that comes with that home birth preparation home birth is one in which you must enter into it with optimal health there must be you know your tests um, for uh, gestational diabetes, beta strep, and eclampsia must come back absolutely clean and for a long period of time, uh, meaning like absolutely normal numbers and for a very long time. Um, also, um, I really, I'm not seeking to discourage, but I am seeking to encourage you to make sure you are on top of your health. Um, if we're sent here in the midst of this health crisis, now is the time to get on your diet, to organize your life and to uh, prepare yourself to be able to take responsibility into your own hands. Um, if that's what you choose, that's what you're choosing to do. Um, also though, I want you to be very clear. First time moms is very, um, is, is, it can be done. However, you would have to be very clear that in spite of your pain tolerance or in spite of your, um, um, you need to make sure that your environment is in order. You need to know that yourself is in order to be able to walk that arduous journey. So usually second time and third time moms usually fare well. So I'm just kind of giving you guidelines to look for when it, when it comes to um, birthing at home, things to things to really hold as measures. Um, it's very important that we understand uh, that because how how much weight it bears on your shoulders in relation to diet, how much bears uh, weight bears on your shoulders in relation to the environment that you're living in. Very very important. Um, if you're like well. Um, I'm going to, this. Uh, you decide I'm going to birth at home, make sure that it is far enough out. If you're in your 15th, 14th, 13th week, then you got enough time to organize your life, your home, your people in your home and environment in order to make things happen. Um, so that's that that if you deciding it, if you're deciding that you want to do it at 35, 36, 37 weeks, it's just too soon. It's um the baby is coming too soon and you cannot just um jump into that, you know, from the middle. So or from in essence, from the last uh, the last of the journey it is very important that you do it sooner. Um, I say that for everyone, for your safety and for your baby's safety. Um, it's a very big deal. Um, I want every mom, though, to uh, and, pre and preferably every doula to have their heads in the game in relation to diet and being having a healthy diet, but also practicing breathing and practicing different pain, um, pain comfort measures. Because even in the hospital, you want to be able to navigate your health yourself. You want to be strong enough to not get overwhelmed, fl frustrated, and panic it, when, if they have you in there alone. If you're just, you're in there with maybe your mom or your mate and they're really not a good help for you, you need to sh strengthen yourself to be able to stand and handle your pain and navigate it. So you can look on the Mothership's 
page on Facebook. I'll have things on there that'll help to strengthen you during that time if you have to go into the hospital uh, without your doula. So we'll have different birthing um, techniques. We'll have different mas self-massage techniques to help you to relax as well as different positions that you can engage in. Okay. Um, yeah. What did you say you have a website? What's the website? You'll find um you'll find the mothership. Um we are paired with the Body Temple Institute of Holistic Health. You'll find the Body Temple Institute.com, www.bodytempleinstitute.com has um all the information for the mothership on it. But I also have a Facebook page for which you'll find us. Um very just a lot of movement on Facebook on the mothership, and so you'll find a lot of a, a lot of our work on the on Facebook. And you said the body, the body temple, the body temple institute of of holistic health is found at www.thebodytempleinstitute.com. All right, I want to pull it up so people can see whatever it looks like. Yes. All right. So here's the website. Um, and where you say the information is located? Yes, on the court, you'll find it. Um, you'll find all over the website. You'll find many things on the website in relation to articles, in relation to health, uh, uh, articles about health and wellness. And then you'll find most of um, our information for the mothership on Facebook. But okay. we do courses and classes on uh, trainings for doulas, birth, childbirth education, and things like that um, through the Body Temple Institute. We give okay. information information and out um, free information out videos and um, informational educational videos are on Facebook okay. so the mothership uh, on Facebook thank you you're welcome Oh my gosh, I need to change. So do you have any, are you doing any online classes since we can't really? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The Body Temple was the Body Temple Institute came about after I started the mothership um, because I wanted to train people in how to become self-sufficient in relation to health. Uh, and I was training, I'm training people online about herbalism and naturopathy. And then I began training doulas online lactation consultants and childbirth educators uh, on through that site on through the body temple institute.com so you can go to that site and uh, find the um okay wow is this the group here no oh it says hold on <laughs> it's instagram wow I didn't know it was a group on Instagram. <laughs> That's actually on. Um, that was on. This is me though. Facebook, call this okay. That was on Facebook. This is Facebook. Okay. Um, I just saw the group. Oh, that group is for actually the doulas who have already become. Um, okay. Very good. I'm gonna put the link in our private uh, chat. Not even. Okay. Me. All right. Okay. Okay. So you said you do have here. I'll switch back to that other other page with the uh, website. So you said yeah. you do have some classes. Yes, we Come absolutely up. do have classes. As a matter of fact, we are also um, doing. How can I send you to you? Okay, okay. Here we go. Yeah. 
Why not? In the I put it in. I put it in our private chat. The link in our okay. private. Uh, I absolutely do have classes. Um, these classes online can be taken from anywhere on the globe. We do have students in all con in in a lot of like in France. I better not say a lot of countries, but I can say France, <laughs> uh, Belize, as well as California, New York, um, Chicago, and Tennessee, Atlanta. We've got lots of students in Detroit. So we have lots of students in different places in America, as well as uh, in the Caribbean and in France, Switzerland also. And we also make sure that we, um, we have a, it's a big deal for us to train women of color because it is mm -hmm. us that have this issue with infant and maternal mortality and doulas and lactation consultants can make the difference in supporting um, mothers and keeping babies alive uh, in that first year of life. Um, we also do, we also recognize that um, it is because we need to be trained from, we need to understand our value, even as children, that we began to do rites of passage for our children. And so we're doing rites of passage to explain to them how valuable their womb is and how important they are. So we're um, inculcating values of self-esteem and self um, self regard at, from an early age uh, and helping girls to be prepared for motherhood, be prepared for womanhood or from an early age also. Um, so there we go. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. So this is the Facebook page. Um and the link is Facebook.com Mama Ma Mama Malusi. Um if you type that in, uh, you can find it. And I'm gonna actually like the page. I didn't even know you had this page. Um so I'm gonna like the page and then uh it'll show up on my pages so then people if they follow me they can actually come and look at the uh they can look at it from there and i'll share it on the actual description in the um in the video because this live video will actually be on the youtube once it uh processes it it'll be on there with the recorded version of it okay i too will share this live video uh on the page okay I'm really uh, glad to have sat with you this evening and talked about this. It's a very powerful video. And you've even um, went in deeper to answer a lot of questions in relation to, um, you know, what the virus is and how it relate acts, you know, acts in the body. Also going in on the part on the vegetables of color, fruits and vegetables of color. These are very good answers um, for people who needed to really get it understand right. how it works you know right really you know that's all, that's all i try to do is uh educate people um on a lot of things so i've, I've done about the immunity I, i've talked about the immune system and you know the anthocyanins and then another week i talked about you know the hand sanitizers and the antibacterial soaps how those are not helping yeah. Yeah. um and they're, they're and you know they're just they're just money makers right now for people, but they're not really serving a purpose at stopping the spread of the disease. Because no. if, it was, if yeah. it was working, we wouldn't have all these cases. Exactly. Um, and then yesterday, I no, was it yesterday? Two. What, what day were it? I don't even know what day it is. It was Sunday when I did that one. Uh, I talked about you know how we actually go about getting sick. Uh, and people think they wash their hands that they're scot free, like they can't get. They can't get an infection and you know they forget about you know airborne and yes. and all types of other things that you know yes. you can pick up a pathogen and your hands were never involved and so um that's the first thing i, I remember i was having a conversation one day with a lady when i was doing my interviews when i worked for the health department and she was like well me and my husband we both washed our hands and i was like and he her husband i believe he had like um it was some type of respiratory infection that he had came back positive for and she was starting to have symptoms and i was like well you're gonna have to get tested now and she was like but i washed my hands and i was like well he's coughing 
And so he's spreading droplets throughout the house. Yes. And all you're doing is breathing those in. And so she, she was like, you know, I never even thought of that. Like, so we, we don't even understand how diseases are even transmitted. It goes beyond just, you know, making sure your hands are washed. There's sexually transmitted ones. There's airborne. There's yeah. droplet born. There's, you know, insect born, vector born, all types of things that, you know, we don't even know about. So I did that whole presentation yeah, on Sunday just to explain that and then also talk about co-infections because they don't talk about um, that a lot of people that are coming back supposedly for COVID-19, they also had some other viral infections. Um, they had the flu, they had rhinovirus, they, and then, you know, the study that I used, it only tested for viral, it didn't test for actual bacteria. Explain so, that. so things like, you know, pertussis, which is whooping cough, people yeah. can have that as well and not know it. And if they're not testing for that, they're not gonna get treated for that. Whooping cough is a bacteria, so you're going to need an antibiotic if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, unless you're going to wait out the 100 days that it may take for this bacteria to go away. Exactly. <laughs> um, it, yeah, but if they're not testing for that, the person will never know they actually have that. And so, you know, I just try to educate people on things, uh, you know, since I worked in this field for almost five years, I, you know, I saw a lot of things. I, you know, I saw how tests can come back negative and then because you weren't, your body wasn't, uh, you know, the virus hadn't got to a level where it could actually be detected in the blood. Then you start showing symptoms, but you had a negative test, but now you're sick. And, you know, if they, if they test too early, that's what happens. You'll have a negative result, but then you're actually a positive case. And so we had those types of cases, um, all types of things. So it's just people need to understand how, number one, disease works. And all, number two, how our body works. And yes. then number three, how, how food and, you know, the environment and, and your activities and the things that you do in your life affect all of that. So, yes. um, you know, people that are smoking or, you know, people yes. that are not exercising. I know everybody's out now. So most people are just sitting around the house, you know, wait and then stress. Everybody's stressed out because they don't know what's going to happen next that all lowers your ability to fight off an infection. Yeah. Um, so we need to realize that. But if nobody's teasing you that and they're telling you, oh, we got a vaccine or you know, take this pill, we think, oh, everything's fine. I just wait for that. And then, you know, that's what ends up doing us in is those things that they try to fight these, these, these pathogens with are not really benefiting the body. You know, our body probably could fight it off itself if it was healthy. So, yeah, we definitely have to make sure our bodies are healthy. <clears throat> wow. It's just so, it's just so, it all comes back to what we're doing. It all comes back to our responsibility. You know, right. it all comes back to how much work we're putting in and making sure we're eating the fruits and vegetables that, that inspire immune system response and health. Where it all comes back to making sure you're communicating with with people whom can help you. And like Kyra said, making sure you have a birth plan. It all comes back down to understanding that you need a self-preservation plan. I think on your um, uh, on your YouTube, you talked about talk with um, uh, Aaron Olinger about preparing for emergencies. Yeah. But really need to become so aware, become Pay more attention. It feels yep. good that Kroger's got food and so and so's got gas down the street, and we don't have to think about those things. But we do have to think about those things. Absolutely, Kyra, we do have a doula program. I'm gonna tell yep. you about it in a minute. Um, we do have to have a, a plan for. We do have to have a um, a plan for how we're going to live. We can't just phone life in anymore. We have right. to actually be be aware, be prepared and be for planning for our self-preservation uh, because exactly. the, the love getting on and you saying that um, they've been using biological warfare on us, but we tend to keep forgetting, but we're yeah. forgetting because we, we feel like they got us, you know, they yeah. got, you know, Kroger's will always be open and uh, UDF will always have gas. No, no, we're the last no. ones on their totem pole that we're, that they're even concerned about. 
You know, if we get wiped off, it's not like they won't, like they're going to miss us. We don't exactly. be, we're the only ones concerned about our health right now. And we really have to make it a high priority to address. Right. Right. Yeah. So yes, Kyra asked, do we have a do a plant program? And you said, yes, you do. Is it on the website? I was still jingling for that. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we have a birth doula program for which you can take at any time because it is online. You will okay. find it on the Body Temple Institute dot com, okay. and you'll find it under courses, and you'll find the doula online doula program, and you'll find the syllabus there as well. I'll go ahead and, and we can I'll post that up for you. The okay. um, right, you'll find it there as well. Are there this, many courses? That's it. No, that's it. You have the page. Oh, oh, oh whoops. Mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the page. And you'll get you'll see where it says right there, online doula, online doula class, holistic doula certification. Okay. Yes. And that's where you'll find um, our information, any uh, syllabus information you're looking for, um, class fees. When uh, when you can start, everything is there for you. Uh, you're able. We the doula certification program has um, it's it has multimedia content, uh, multimedia lectures, as well as um, you. We will have the books and things that you need in order to um, to in order to start and complete the program. In addition to that, after the program is over, you will have to. Uh, shadow um, three births, and we also have doulas ready to support and receive you and in that shadowing, in that shadowing of those births. So you'll be, you won't have to worry about finding births, uh, finding okay. moms who need help afterwards. Okay. Awesome. So we have a few more minutes. Um, did anybody have any other questions? I hope you guys share this information, especially if you have friends and family that are, um, you know, experiencing pregnancy during isolation. Um, what's the average cost for a doula? I don't know if we ever we talked about that. You will find the um, there in Cincinnati because doula the use of doulas are so is so new. Um, mm -hmm. You may find it ranging from um, in many different price ranges. Um, okay. you know, on average, an average price for a doula is about four hundred dollars. Can go between four to six hundred dollars, um, okay. and that can be paid in installments. Whenever you go to see uh, the doula, you can make those installment payments. You can make it based upon your um, peace, Mama Divine. Uh, <laughs> Make it. You can make it based upon your. Uh, uh, you can make it based upon your your uh, visits. Excuse me. Yeah, and how many visits should you go see? You can break it down into that. Um, a lot of doulas are willing to work with you. They're willing to help you, support you. You know, talk to them. Uh, like I said, on average, four to six hundred dollars here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and that should um, go go by that. So when you go to talk to them, see what their price is, um, and do not hesitate to when you go to speak to a doula, you're interviewing her, and the interviewing is not business interviewing, friendship interviewing, because we're we're a sister friend. We're the doulas are sister friends that are there for you to help you see if this woman gels with you. If this, if this doula is someone that you would like in your sacred space, if this is someone who you would be willing to accept in your sacred space of birth, then this is someone who is a proper doula for you. Uh, if you're feeling her, if you're not really feeling her energy, she doesn't really, you know, something about her just really don't flow with you. Believe in that and keep it moving. That's okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. And she and she those doulas are not offended if you don't if you don't feel them. We are trying to understand that a woman's sacred space is very is very particular for her. And so and that's OK. If you're not if you don't choose that one, that doula, there are many more that help. And I also can help you to find a doula 
if you need one. There are so many that I have access to that would be supportive. Does so anybody have any questions? Tanya Bradford said that's very reasonable. Greetings, Tanya. And yeah. you said you have, you have doulas that you train pretty much across the country. So maybe one one of your doulas actually in their area. So yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> You be you be. I'm so um, excited to um, to be able to be a part of this this movement, this birth movement, and to be able to be connected with so many other birth workers across the country. Um, Mama Divine Birth Wisdom, she is in Louisiana, and she also is a hub for information, education, and for uh, birth work in her area. Um, I'm very proud to be amongst that um, first line of defense for our mothers and to helping them helping them find the resources that they need. You said she's in Louisiana, but I know there's been an uptick of cases in that state. Um, According people, to propaganda, yes. yes but yes. people on the ground have said, I don't know nobody. <laughs> right. It, 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 it's weird. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah I, don't, I don't know anybody personally either. Um, I, I, you know, I had a Facebook friend that recently passed away, and I don't know if he actually had COVID nineteen. He looked healthy when he was talking to us earlier that day. He didn't look sick or anything, but he's in New York, um, and so you know that's one of those hot spots where there's a lot of cases there. So I don't know. Um, yeah, um. <laughs> be more than one thing going on that they're not telling us about too. Yeah. <laughs> the propaganda alone will kill it will kill us though because it's yes. just so stressful. You know, yes. it's so stressful and when we listen to um the Donald Trump come on and he's talking and NPR news is coming on and it's giving updates and then you're, then we got uh Mike DeWine coming on as the governor of Cincinnati the governor of Ohio and he's closing schools for another thirty days and all oh, this yeah. is on and then um somebody's in my inbox telling me oh they're gonna close everything down we're going into martial law in two weeks they're gonna enact the stafford act and we like they they already did the stafford act two weeks ago what is y'all talking about right it's right so much. like it's just so much propaganda flying enough to give you whiplash and to make you ill we yes. are a collective consciousness you all be aware of that and that collect people are putting virus is in the collective conscious. They keep saying virus. Right? You know what I'm saying? And this makes you really susceptible. So yes. go ahead and just ignore this. Turn off your TV news. Yes. You know, watch yes. it. If you have to, watch it once a week, but turn it off and dance. Turn on yes. your music and dance. That's free. You know, yes. eat your fruits and go out. And now we're in a time where we're in our last frost in Ohio. Go ahead and get you some seeds and plant some vegetables in your yard. Oh, yeah. Earth take care of you right now. Yes. Earth take care of you. Get into herbs. Take a look at some herbs. They got some herb stores are still open. You can go to, to the health food store and pick up some herbs and experiment with them. Learn how to use them. You know, do, there's so many different things that we can do other yes. than sitting up and listening to them. Um, All day. All day, all night, because they'll be at it all day and all night, literally. <laughs> right, right. Shoot. But yeah, speaking of the herbs and things, I'm going to actually be doing a live on Sunday talking about Victory Garden and how to get started. So yeah. uh hope you guys can come back and watch that on Sunday. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that's one activity that if you if you are focused on starting seeds and stuff, you won't be thinking about anything else because that, that takes patience and and studying and research and everything. <laughs> yes, and it's and it's hell and it, it is good for us. It's good yes. for us to be able to feel like we're affecting change in our world, even right. if they, they put us in our house. There's so much stuff that we could be doing and learning and 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 taking on much less the little things like time management and <laughs> organizing our houses and things. It's so much right. stuff to be doing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, so anybody have any questions before we get out of here? Kyra said, uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for uh, watching, Kyra. Thank you yeah, for everybody else that's here as well. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Divine. Yes. 
<laughs> everybody who came. Yes, and if you, like I say, make sure you share the video. It'll be up probably in about 15 minutes after the broadcast ends. Um, then you can share the link um, and, and they can watch it. Subscribe to her channel. She got a lot of powerful things that on her uh, channel for us to be able to use to better our lives. Definitely. Yes. yes. I'm actually having a uh, police officer, Taisha. She, she's from Cincinnati. Um, she actually lives in Georgia now, um, but she's going to come on Saturday. And that's going to be our next COVID-19 isolation solution. It's talking about firearms uh, and protection. Uh, yeah. So it's going to come on here and we're going to discuss that. And then I'm going to actually be on her show on Thursday and I'm going to be talking about COVID-19 and, you know, dispelling the, the myth about the hand sanitizer and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, I got a lot of stuff coming up. <laughs> so we'll be watching you. Yeah, we'll be watching you because that's that's things that we really need to understand the ins and outs of. Yes. Yeah. Big deal. Yes. It's a big deal. Yes. Well, if nobody has any questions, um, I will have all the information from this, uh, this, this talk that we had this evening in the description of the video. So I have all the links and things. So if you want to contact uh, Mama Lucy, uh, you can. Um, like I said, again, if you said if you have any questions or if you're if you're experiencing, you know, some issues and you are pregnant, she's a good source that you can contact. She also has doulas pretty much around the United States, around the world. Um, so. <laughs> If anybody's watching this and they're outside of the United States, and, you know, like France or somewhere, and yes. there's somebody there that can help you. <laughs> yes. And still, you know, yeah. you, you are also the hand that you're looking for. So you are the one that is there to change the day. So if you want to be a doula, come forward because we can do that too. Yes. yes. So hopefully, please, uh, hopefully this year we'll be translated into French. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, our doula classes will be translated into French. Oh, wow, what that's amazing. You, you can still find me at www.thebodytempleinstitute.com. You can even message message me there. I also have my email, thebodytemple999 at gmail.com. Or the, yeah. So you can message me for the mothership or the Body Temple Institute's herbal classes. Definitely. You know, the Body Temple Institute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 999. The Body Temple 999 at gmail.com. All right, I'll put it in the comments. That's my email, yes. All right, well, that's the end of the day. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, you can contact her at her email or on her website or on Facebook. And she also has a YouTube page, and I'll put the link in the uh, description of this video so you can visit her her um, YouTube and you can subscribe and watch her videos and learn from the things that she has to teach on there. <laughs> yes, oh, crazy. Good thing. <laughs> I really appreciate this, Nadia. I really appreciate this. This oh, is a great welcome. I thank you for saying that you would even come on here and, and do this because it, it's needed. So yes, thank you very much. Okay. That's <laughs> all right. We... Well, everybody, have a good evening. Um, like I say, if you have any questions, you can contact her. All right. Good night, everybody. Many blessings. Thank you. Bye bye.